Welcome to my floor. I don't think this area is too bad. You got some computer stuff right here. You got the rig right here. I don't think this looks too bad, or at least I hope it doesn't. So if you're watching this video, you're probably one of a few people. You're either my mom. <laughs> You're one of my friends that actually take pity on me and watch this stupid YouTube channel. Or you're into sim racing, you're wanting to build your own or just check out how mine turned out. Well what you're looking at beside me is the result of about $50 in parts give or take and a day spent with my dad putting this thing together. And here it is. But before we get into all this you may be asking yourself a question. Hey, well T. Big T. Why would you want to put together a sim racing rig? Well, let me just introduce a question here, uh, hypothetically. Let's say you're a race car driver, you're a Jimmy Gibbs, Dale Earnhardt, and Michael Carter and you want to get some track some seat time in well all the tracks are closed right now so what are you gonna do or more realistically you're not really a race car driver you just want to get some driving in after having too many margaritas on taco Tuesday like me I get it okay no judgment here but you can't go out drinking and driving well all of these options lead you into the option of sim racing this is actually a real wheel I'm using on my car we're going to get on the rig as soon as an adapter actually comes in for it it's a way to learn techniques like drifting familiarize yourself with with multiple tracks and overall just have a great time without having to put any wear and tear on your actual car because you guys may not know this but uh Racing's expensive. But when you set up one of these bad boys, you can race all you want. So I'm gonna show you guys around the specs of my build, talk to you about the building process, and then I'm going to take you for a drive and show you what it's all about. Going stupid in the whip, 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 whip. So before anything else, we gotta talk about the seat here. And my seat came out of an NA Mazda Miata. I went with a Miata seat for a few reasons. First off, I loosely based this design over my actual Miata that I drive daily. Also, this fits fairly sleek and discreet in my room. It's not too big. It's also very well bolstered and pretty sporty for what it is and i also got it for the low price of free shout out to uh cameron from cameron from the 912 shout out to cameron had to look your name up again but overall i think it looks better than just ripping a seat out of a camry and going with it and it serves its job perfectly fine Obviously, though, one of the most interesting thing about this build is the construction of the frame, which is, of course, out of wood. But what you may not know is this is actually Home Depot's finest 2x4s. No lie, we actually called them to the back and had them pull this off of the top shelf. This isn't just the stuff you get by the counter. No sarcasm. The wood by itself was probably about 40 bucks. We used pretty much nothing but 2x4s and also like a couple of 2x6s or something that were just a little bit wider for the base to mount on and the seats to mount on. We started with a frame and then just kind of built from there. I had drawn up plans, but after just watching other people's wood builds, it really wasn't too hard to just put this together as we went. It's rock solid, holds everything in place exactly where I want it, and serves the purpose perfectly fine. Is it the most aesthetically beautiful thing? Maybe not, but who cares, dude? You're gonna be using a headset, but we'll get into that in a minute. The cheapest rigs I was finding online that were pre-made were like going for three, four hundred dollars. So when you compare the price to performance on this bad boy, it's kind of stupid. And with the money I saved on the cockpit build, I put into a VR headset for the display. We'll get to that in a minute. We're using a Thrustmaster T300 RS GT. The GT just comes with nice pedals that we inverted. Wasn't very hard at all. I've seen a lot of people over-engineer this and put like uh, shelving racks to actually hold this thing up. You don't need to do that. We just screw the platform into the back of the, the base and it works fine. Inverting the pedals makes it feel a lot more natural and this just supports it right off the rip. Also, the wheel is super smooth. I know a lot of people like the G920 for the price, but when you're getting around the $400 range, I think you should just go with Thrustmaster. The wheel was a little bit small for my taste. Again, we're gonna be mounting this bad boy on there, but we're gonna have to wait for the adapter for that. Another bonus of the Thrustmaster over the Logitech setup that I was previously using before, before we made the whole cockpit thing, is the shifter. It feels really nice. It's mostly made out of metal. The Logitech shifter just kind of felt like a toy, and this thing gives you nice lengthy shifts, and it all just kind of snaps into place satisfyingly, and it's great. It does the job. Damn, boy, he's thick! 
all in all, I think we got up around 8, 30, 9 o'clock, and we were done around 7, so I would say it took us about a day to get this all together. That's also including spending a lot of time steam cleaning this seat to make it clean and painting the actual rig itself. I know you could just build the rig and not paint it, which probably would have been fine as well, but I just wanted it to blend in with the room a little bit more. Overall, I'm really impressed with what we did with this rig. It's solid, cheap didn't take a lot of time to build and it was fun. Alright, so I think the last thing to talk about is the display, which is my Oculus Rift S, but I think the best way to do that is just to jump into it, so let's do that. Alright, so here we are, finally in the rig. Custom map in Osetta Corsa with a custom car. It's gonna be a little hard to drive and talk. It took us a minute to get into the game, partially because of some bad playing on my part when it came to setting up this rig for VR. Because man, playing with a VR headset with your rig right here is kind of a pain in the ass, at least in a set of Corsa. My desk with my keyboard and mouse is over there. And to get into a game and set everything up and change anything you ever have to change, even if it's just to go to a new race, a new map, whatever, you have to do everything on the keyboard and mouse. I wasn't planning for that, so I didn't have a keyboard and mouse set up over here on my rig. I just planned on doing everything through the headset and the steering wheel. And there's probably workarounds I could do to get it working right, but you know what? I just kind of want to jump in and race. Sometimes the monitor setup is just a little bit better at that, but what it isn't better with is the immersion. Man, it is really cool to kind of like actually be in the car and be able to look around, like see this menu right here. That's a really nice detail. I meant to close that out, hopefully you guys aren't really seeing that. But you're able to just look around and just enjoy details that you might have missed otherwise if you were just using a monitor or even a triple monitor setup. Yeah, the setup is a little clunky at first, it's a little hard to get used to. Especially if you're somebody who's easily susceptible to motion sickness, this can be um, really jarring for some people. For me, not really a big deal. I've started to get used to the headset after using it for a while. Your mileage may vary, if you're extremely sensitive to motion sickness, it's something to uh, think about before you would actually invest into something like this especially when it's kind of already hard to come by these but that's topic for another video love that turbo sound it's kind of hard to talk and play so I apologize if my commentary isn't too great um, another thing you'll definitely be having to get used to in a racing sim if you've never really played them before is the lack of g-force because when you're in a car you can feel yourself sliding around when you're taking a corner or something and this, all of your feedback is in the wheel itself, which is why it's important to get a decent wheel. You can't get some decent wheels for cheap. I really like the Thrustmaster personally, but hell man, even putting like five hours into this already, it definitely takes a lot of getting used to, but when you do, the game can really replicate the car's physics in real life pretty well. But you're going to spend a lot of time just ramming into walls when it's your first time in a sim racer, especially when it's with a wheel and uh pedal set. Ooh, 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 I am not very good at that. I want to get into learning how to drift, something I wouldn't really want to do on my daily Miata. And luckily, sim racing is something that'll allow me to do that without actually putting strain on a real car, or have to dump hundreds of dollars into classes just to get the fundamentals. Now, of course, if you want to do it seriously, or even if you're not, you know, it's good to actually get some real track time. But when you're stuck in your house and you got nothing else to do, I mean, this is just great, man. A set of course that has is, um, the Shotoko Revival mod, which is like a Japanese highway system recreated in a set of courses. So you could just spend hours cruising that highway system, listening to music. There's online communities dedicated to just driving and cruising. And if I was any good, I would have been able to take those corners. But again, it's a lot of practice. But it's all good, man, because I got plenty of time to practice. Just kidding. I actually have to work. But if you're looking to get into sim racing, I highly recommend just building a wooden rig, to be honest with you. Unless you got the money to put into it, I basically saved hundreds by just building my own with my dad. Wasn't very hard, I think we used measuring tape, a circular saw, very basic tools for cutting wood. It was not hard at all to put together, we didn't follow plans. 
We loosely kind of followed the dimensions of my Miata and we watched a few videos. That was about it. Overall, it wasn't too difficult. You can knock it out in a day. Hell, if you're really crafty and you don't care about painting it, you could have a rig built in probably a few hours. In conclusion, I think the only thing I have to add here is uh, I'll definitely want to cover more sim racing stuff because I have it. I'll also be covering VR stuff because, hey, I just got a whole VR headset out of this. Personally, I'll take a whole VR library over just having a triple monitor set up. Oh, yeah, this technically comes up cheaper than having a triple monitor set up. Of course, both had their pros and cons. If you want me to get into the details of like uh, VR racing, what it's like to get used to the uh, motion sickness and whatnot, I could cover that in a video. Just be sure to uh, stick around for that. Tell me what you think. And thank you guys for checking the video out. It has been T. Be sure to check out all of my social media links and all that good stuff. And if you want to donate, there's a Patreon for that. Till then, I'll see you on the next one. And I'm out. That, oh, no, my car is definitely on the mountain. Oh, I'm going to have to get out and assess the damage of this. Uh, yep. I think this this car is definitely fucked. There's me uh, missing my head because I'm having a little bit of an outer body experience right now. I basically died right here on the hill, and uh, this is where my ghost will stay forever. Come on, baby. Come on, baby. Come on. Oh, yeah, there we go. We are out of here. I'm going to cut this whole part out, and you guys will have no idea that I just... Oh, my left tire is. Who needs a front left tire? We're fine, baby. Mazda Miata doesn't have a lot of uh, torque for going up hills, as you can, as you can see. Uh, I'm kind of stuck again.